last tutorial, we briefly covered the different workflows for bringing in media into Resolve. In this tutorial, we'll be covering how to deal with baked or self-contained videos. The difficulty with self-contained videos is that we just have one single long video clip to work with. Any grading we apply to it will be applied to the entire video clip unless we split up the video into individual cuts. Fortunately, in Resolve, we have the powerful scene cut detector that will enable us to quickly add cuts to the video. To get our video into the scene cut detector, we'll need to locate the video in the media page, right click on it and choose scene cut detection. This launches the scene detect window. Now the way the scene cut detector works is it goes through the video and automatically finds the cut points and adds splits to it so that we can grade the shots individually. So let's give this thing a go. I'll click the start button and watch as Resolve detects the probable scene cuts in the video. We can see each scene cut represented by the green lines here in the graph. And now that it is finished, we can also see the scene cuts over here in the cut list. Now we may need to do a little manual work of verifying the scene cuts because it may have picked up some detections that aren't actually cuts or may have missed some. We can step through the cuts by clicking anywhere in the graph and use the up down arrow keys to step through the cuts. We can also use the keyboard shortcuts P and N where P stands for previous and N for next. Now what we're looking for here as we step to the cut list is to see the last frame of a clip in this left window here and the first and second frames of the next clip in the middle and right windows here. When we see it this way, we'll know that we're looking at a clean scene cut. If it doesn't show this way, then we have a scene cut where we shouldn't have one. Now if there are fades, cross dissolves, or quick camera moves, they may be picked up as scene cuts. And so the easiest way to address these is to adjust the sensitivity of the scene detector by adjusting this horizontal bar either up or down. Lowering the bar increases the sensitivity while raising it lowers the sensitivity. As you can see here, these lower spikes aren't actually scene changes, but rapid movements in the scene. We can take a closer look at them by zooming in with the slider. With the sensitivity bar, we can quickly eliminate a lot of these scene cuts by raising the bar just above them. You'll also notice that when we did this, the cut list was updated with the changes. Now after we've eliminated or added scene cuts, using the sensitivity control, we can further fine tune the cuts with manual tools. We can add a needed scene cut by clicking this plus button here, and we can eliminate a scene cut by clicking the minus button. These other controls here allow us to set in and out points over a specified region and then prune the unnecessary cuts by clicking the scissors button. The idea with pruning is that it deletes all of the unnecessary scene cuts except for the most likely one. Up here under the drop down menu, we have a variety of helpful options. We can reset the zoom and scene marks. We can save our scene detection for use later on. And we can save or load an EDL with the scene cut information. When we're all finished, we'll click the add cuts to media pool button to add the scene cuts to the media pool. Then just close the window. It's a good idea to go to the conform page and create a timeline. To do this, we'll just click the plus sign in the timeline section, give it a name, and click create new timeline. It's also good practice to go through the clips once more to check for any errors we might have missed. If there are any errors like two shots needing split or join together, we can use the editing tools of the conform page to make the necessary changes.